Hi, I'm Big Bear Ron. Uh, I've got just a little bit of milk left, and I want to make a sourdough starter with it. And basically, what I'm going to do is put equal amounts of milk and flour, and I'm going to throw a little condensed milk in there because it's got sugar in it, and the sugar will help feed the yeast. And I might throw in another little, little bit of sugar anyway okay and just a pinch of salt to kind of help control the growth of the yeast but uh, and then to make sourdough the first thing I have to do I have to scald this milk and I'm going to do it in the microwave oven I'm just going to pour it into this plastic container and then heat it up until it's almost ready to boil over and then uh, I need to cool it down because if I put the yeast in right away, it'll deactivate, it'll kill the yeast. Okay, so uh, let the milk cool down, and then I need, then I'm gonna pour it all right back into this cart. Yeah, and then I'm gonna let it sit out and sour for about three days. Now I know in the USA, whenever I did that, that had a tendency to attract bugs little bitty flying gnats and stuff. I'm hoping that that won't happen here, but we'll see. I don't intend to keep the sourdough going on for generations and generations and generations. I'm just in the mood for making some yeast stuff, you know, and I thought mm, pizza dough, dinner rolls, or, you know, just a little bit here and a little bit there, you know, okay? So, all right, so, let's see, this is about, I don't know how much milk I've got here, really, so I say, oh, okay, about a cup full. Coffee cup full, that is. Yeah. So, all right, let me get this uh, scalded, and I'll be back, and I'll put in my yeast, and we'll go through the rest of it, okay? All right. Okay, uh, I prefer to scald my milk in the microwave oven. It really is less messy and put it in a tall bowl, a little bit of milk, about a cup full, in a tall bowl. That way you can see that it's bubbling up and you can turn off the microwave before it bubbles over. And if you've ever done that bubbling over thing on a stove, you know how aggravating that can be. Not only that, it's very easy to scorch milk when you're cooking over the stove and you generally have to you know, stand right over it and constantly stir it. So I just put my milk in a microwave safe dish, put it in tall, yes, you know, plenty of room this way. Now I don't mean tall and narrow, the point is, is that it not be able to bubble up over all in your microwave, okay? And uh, heat it up until it gets bubbly, then take it out and you got to let it cool down. Now the reason you have to do that is because there are proteins in whole milk that will prevent the rising from occurring after you put the yeast in. I don't want to put flour or sugar or anything into that milk. Not yet. It'll cook the flour somewhat, change the flavor of it. I don't want to do that. Uh, it'll kill the yeast, okay? And so I'm just going to let it all cool. I put it on a cold table. <laughs> and then that's where this wide mouth uh, bowl comes in handy. It'll help cool that milk off faster and then we can get on with what we're trying to do with it, okay? If your milk or your liquid is too hot for your finger, then it's too hot for the yeast. And here, it's just right. So it's cool enough for me to put my yeast in. But before I do that, uh, yeast ought to be stored in a dark location. That's why you uh, find it so often in dark jars. I don't have any dark jars. So and this is not a Ziploc package. So. I'm just going to pour it all into this jar, and I'll keep this jar uh, out of the light. Okay, now what did I do? Here we go. I'm going to get my scissors. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put about a... couple teaspoons of yeast into this milk. And then I'm going to pour the rest of this yeast into this jar right here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. 
and uh, I put just a little bit of sugar from this out of this condensed milk. Just yeah, there we go. This milk has been scalded already uh, while during the heating process. And let's see, let's put uh, just a little bit of a little bit of salt. Yeah. There we go. And let me get a spoon and just stir this up. Now, if you keep a starter, uh, you have to replenish with equal amounts of flour and liquid every at least every three days. Stir it every day. Stir it every day. And about every three days, replenish with uh, equal amounts of milk or some liquid and uh, flour. And it'll grow and it'll ferment all through it. And then you can look up friendship bread or Amish uh, sourdough recipes. They're all over the internet. And, uh, and you can go from there. Okay? I'm just going to. I'm just going to, uh, you know how I am, I'm going to make bread just with whatever I've got. <laughs> I don't buy self-rising flour, usually. I have a time or two. And uh, if I've forgotten to label my canister, you know, on one of those rare occasions when I buy self-rising flour, I just take my finger and stick it in, side, and taste the flour and yeah if it's got a salty taste to it then I know it's self rising because well uh, at the factory they've added salt and baking powder to the bag of flour so I usually uh, like a whole grain but I can't find it here uh, so I'm going to mix what is an unbleached almost whole grain flour with some bread flour. That way I get more protein in my bread. And that's important for gluten development whenever you're making yeast bread products, which is what I generally do. And, and I like my cakes and my cookies and my muffins to be a bit on the not too tender. I like to have a little gear, I mean a little you know, a little resistance to my tooth, so I, I like a strong bread. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna take I'll take a spoon and mix this up and then I'm just gonna fill this coffee cup here and pour it into my yeast milk and I'll show that to you in just a minute. You thought I was joking, didn't you? The only time I really measure much when I'm cooking is when it comes to things like baking soda and baking powder where, yeah, a little bit of ingredient goes a long way, but I'm not too strict about it. I just uh, measure enough to kind of get what it is I want. You get the proportion right. All right. Now, Actually, this is a little bit, a bit too thick. It shouldn't be this thick. So I'm going to add some water to the mix, and uh, thin it out, and I'll show it to you. And uh, before I pour it back into my carton here, but I do want to stir it well and get all that yeast and get everything all in there. Yeah. Okay. I just added a little water, and what I want is kind of the, we call it in Cook's term, viscosity or the thickness of the pour. We want it to pour kind of like a pancake batter, okay? 
There you go. Or a, a creamy salad dressing. Oh, yeast. Yes, if you like yeast, you know that smell is nice. Okay. So, yeah, just stir this up and then we'll pour it back into this carton right here. And I'm going to leave it setting out in a warm, not hot, place, probably over there near where I cook. With this closed, it protect it from draft, but, you know, enough air can get into it. And uh, I'm going to leave it alone for about three days. What's today? Um, Saturday. So Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Tuesday, I will either uh, use some of it to make something, or I will add some more water and flour to it and let it set for three more days. And that way it will be, what, Friday or Saturday. And it'll be ready to use, and then I'll probably have about oh. Now, uh, let me let me mention this. Um, you don't want this to be full when you put this in there because it will rise and it will foam over. So I will keep an eye on that too. I may have to put it in a larger container if I add more to it. Hopefully, I won't have to, and there'll be enough in it by next. Friday or Saturday that I can just, you know, pour it into a measuring cup or whatever and, and make some bread or something with it. Okay? Okay, it's about up to here. Okay? And it'll bubble up some. Hopefully, I'll keep an eye on it so that I won't let it, but I want to close it. There you go. And just let it set over in a warm place. You get the idea. And that's where we get sourdough. Well, I found out quickly that my my milk carton idea is not going to work. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So, not to worry. Uh, I kept noodles that were made out of potato starch and this canister right here so the potato starch won't hurt a thing with the sourdough so I'm just gonna pour the whole thing okay there I got it all cleaned up yeah I have just a little bit of a mess over there but it's all cleaned up and there's my sourdough right there and yes I do want to put it on a lid put a not too tight take it screw it all the way and loosen up just a little bit so some air can still get in there. Yeah, I'm not going to just type. There we go. All right. I'm still going to let it sit for three days, and then we'll go from there. Okay? <laughs>